screensaver. Welcome on stage, Utz, for the seminar. Give him a hand. Oh yeah, looking good. Um, hi, I'm Utz. Uh, and I'm here to talk about my latest project that I've been working on for the past two and a half years almost. Uh, disclaimer up front, it's nowhere near ready. Uh, I mainly want to talk to you about it because uh, it's now at a point where I could use like input uh, and ideas from other people. So I'm gonna tell you what I have and then you can tell me your ideas about it. Anyway, uh, so I'm Uts. I make chiptune since about 15 years now. Um, and I also write a lot of uh, music engines for old school platforms. Mm. Like uh, a couple of days ago, I think I uploaded my 30th driver for the ZX Spectrum to my GitHub. So, yeah. Um, and I'm the author of Houston Tracker, which is a uh, music editor for TI graphing calculators. Some of you might know that. Um, why am I telling you this? Because I'm about to make some very wild claims about trackers, and I'll hope you trust me that I have at least some idea what I'm talking about. Anyway, so um, existing chiptune trackers. Well, there's a few things about them. Usually they target one specific sound drive but it has some limits regarding the interface uh, and yeah there So basically you make, you make your normal poke music and raster music tracker and then you have some iPhone app where you make the hard bass channel and then uh, you bring those two together. So yeah, not the most convenient. so much. 
I mean, some of the UIs look they, like they could actually run on a native platform, but just happen to have been brought over to PC for whatever reason. Uh, there's actually a few trackers um, that really make use of the possibilities that you would have on a modern PC, as in there's no tools to aid compositions. Like many of them don't have uh, graphical envelopes. Many of them don't have ARP generators or any sort of audio auto optimization. Uh, there are some notable exceptions, like I think Family Tracker is pretty good. Tia Tracker does uh, quite a few things right. Also, like famously, Raster Music Tracker has auto optimization, of course. Uh, but why is it? Why is it that we don't have <clears throat> that many good trackers? Well, because writing a good tracker is really, really hard. And it takes a lot of time, especially if you write one that runs on PC and targets something else. Like, writing a sound driver is, is easy. Like, if you know what you're doing, it's maybe a few evenings work. Uh, writing a cross-development tracker, I would say at least three to four months of work, and then you have a simple, shitty one. Uh, for a good one, you will take much longer, like... Uh, Tia Tracker has been in development, uh, was in development for one and a half years before it actually came out. Family Tracker has been in development for 15 years and still was like forked five years ago because the author couldn't keep up with the feature demands that people had. So the question for me is how do we solve these issues? How do we deal with this uh, situation? And the answer to that is, of course, with another tracker. So, okay, here's my plan. Step one, write a compiler that takes a standardized module format and compiles it into an arbitrary target output format based on rules that you specify in a simple config file. Step two, write a tracker that's based on that compiler and make that one really, really good. And that will be a cross-development tracker running on PC, targeting the usual operating systems, and it will be called bin tracker. So, what to expect from bin tracker? <clears throat> Originally, I held this I held this talk at the Chiptune conference, and I, I gave it this clickbaity title of five ways in which uh, bin tracker will change the future of Chiptune. But okay, let's not do that. Let's not go there. Uh, but okay, I'm gonna name five key points to illustrate what, in my opinion, will qualify Bin Tracker as this chiptune audio workstation as opposed to just another tracker. So, uh, number one, uh, all in one. Bin Tracker is an all in one solution. That means any platform, any sound chip, any engine in one powerful editor. Uh, we have a compiler that is Turing complete, so it can perform any conversion taste, uh, task. And uh, Bin Tracker will have emulation powered by MAME, uh, and possibly other backends or even hardware. Uh, so, but in essence, that means anything that works in MAME uh, can be supported in Bin Tracker. Number one, uh, number two, it should be customizable, and and the uh, key motto here is uh, adapt the editor to your needs, not the other way around. Uh, so the entire look and feel of the tracker can be changed via configuration files. Uh, all the color schemes will be configurable. All the key bindings will be configurable. Uh, you will even be able to change like placings of where stuff is in the interface. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, number three. There should be digital audio workstation like features. I mean, uh, we have seen this in trackers like in Renoise and Giscola bus, what, what you can, you know, how you can mix this idea of a digital audio workstation with a tracker. And so I think, yeah, some of these ideas can be brought into chiptune. Uh, so like, for example, some people don't really like to work with trackers. So wanna have a piano roll? Yeah, let's have a piano roll. You want to have graphical envelopes and automate parameters? Yeah, let's have that stuff. Do you want like presets and patches? 
Uh, yes, like uh, in BinTracker, there will be a database for storing your instrument presets, for storing your riffs, for storing whatever you want. And another feature that people commonly associate with digital audio workstations, um, uh, which I think is important enough to dedicate an, an entire talking point to, is plugins. And Basically, it's, uh, most of the features that I just talked about, they should also be plugins. Uh, but, I mean, go wild, go crazy. For example, what about um, project management? Like, ever been in that situation where you compose a track and then you want to try something out, but you're not entirely sure if it's going to work? So you save your file, and then you save your file under a different name, and then you edit that file and maybe it doesn't work and in the end you end up having like the same track under 20 different file names. Well, there's, there's a solution for this, it's called version control. And so basically um, that will allow you to just, you know, revert to any point in your edit history, branch out, try different stuff and not have this mess around. So BinTracker will have uh, Git support built in. And if we have Git support, if we have version control, we can also do things like online collaboration. I'm not sure uh, how much this is happening in, in the demo scene already, but I see it happening like in the chiptune scene. It happens more and more that people write tracks together uh, over the internet. And I think a modern tracker should have provisions for that built in. Uh, and yeah, it can pretty much be built for free on top of version control. Also, like, totally different thing. Uh, some people are into algorithmic composition and that kind of uh, stuff. Uh, also, people, some people are into microtonal uh, composition and harmony theory and this kind of things. There could be plugins to support those kind of things, right? And also, importing and converting between formats is, is, a, is an important thing. And it should, be done, it, it should be done intelligently in the sense that, yeah, maybe have telemetrics for this kind of stuff because, you know, converting between two different sound drivers is, is in the end is not deterministic. There's different ways you can go about it and maybe one's better than the other. So, yeah. Uh, also, of course, it should import stuff like MIDI. It should import MML. It should maybe even import scores from like Lillipond and whatever. Uh, Technically, the possibilities uh, in bin tracker are endless. Like there will be an API for this, and you will be able to add your own plugins. Which um, brings me to another point, and this is like this is for the hackers, right? So the thing is, uh, the way bin tracker is built, well, it's uh, it of course will be open source, uh, and um, it's written in Scheme. Um, which some people might not like that much, but, um, well, I like it, so deal with it. Um, and yeah, Scheme is very minimalistic. You can learn the syntax pretty much in a day. So it's actually quite easy to get started, I think. And, well, here's the, the one most important feature for me in BinTracker. BinTracker is going to be programmable at runtime which means you can change pretty much anything about bin tracker while bin tracker is running which means essentially you can program bin tracker in bin tracker right um, okay that sounds maybe a bit weird but i'll get back to it but okay now i, I hyped you up with all these uh, fantastic stories about what's going to be in bin tracker so how about let's look where i am with the project actually right so, current state of bin tracker. We have a great logo because a logo, as everybody knows, it's the most important part about the project, right? Uh, it's made by lions, tigers, and dice. I think it looks really slick. Um, okay, well, just kidding. Let's talk about the current state of bin tracker. Um, well, as I was saying, I've been working on the project for almost two and a half years. I made a prototype in 2017. Maybe somebody has seen it. it was also called bin tracker, but um, it was too limited. It was too buggy, so I started to rewrite it in early 2018. 
and I've been pretty much working on it daily since that, unless I have like other stuff going on, like going to deadline. So where are we at? This core library or compiler, um, I have the prototype done and it's working. Uh, so I can, like bin tracker is provably Turing complete. Um, this uh, trinity of like a module format, standard as module format, a configuration format, and the compiler, it has its own name. It's called MDAL or Music Data Abstraction Language. And if you go to the bin tracker site, which I will give you the link for in a minute, you can uh, already find a lot of information on that. And yeah, thing is Turing complete. Actually, it's uh, based on Lambda calculus, but you can implement the Turing machine in, in Lambda calculus, right? So I would say there's an equivalent. Uh, and you can already program bin tracker in bin tracker. It's not very pretty, but it works. And now at the moment, I'm working on the GUI. And um, yeah, I'm not actually that concerned that I can pull it off, per se. But I want to make sure that it's elegant and that it's intuitive and powerful at the same time. So I will take my time for that. And it will take at least two or three months more before it's anywhere near workable. And that's saying I, uh, I have a pretty packed schedule for the rest of 2019. So don't expect anything very time soon. But OK, with that said, let's have a look at the actual thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so as you can say, uh, yeah, pretty much looks like your average tracker. There's nothing too much out of the ordinary, and uh, that's something I want to keep it that way. When you open it up, it should look simple. It should be immediately apparent what this thing is about. Um, of course, like details will still change a lot. There will be more colors, uh, more buttons, all that kind of stuff. But I think the basic uh, idea, I want to keep it very simple when you first open it up. OK, so um, yeah, the display is implemented. The editing is not implemented yet. So I'm not going to show you anything about that. But So at the moment, it just shows stuff. And the interesting thing here is, um, OK, this is Hubie. This is a driver for ZX Spectrum. and. Um, there's some interesting things to see here. Like Hubie, for example, has a fixed pattern length to eight steps. But bin tracker doesn't care. In bin tracker, your patterns can be how long you ever you want them. And the compiler will figure out how to, you know, chop them up and line them up. Also, um, Hubie has uh, like this, uh, the sequence that you see over here is actually completely virtual. Like, um, there are actually only two sequence channels in Hubie. But uh, yeah, bin tracker allows you to just split off that drum thing and have your own patterns for it if you want to. Uh, the idea here is that you could also switch to a simple layout so that it would be like in XM, for example, that you have just one column in your, in your sequence editor. Or that, uh, and this is an idea that I, I, um, I've stolen from one tracker, and it's also in Bouze, which is one of the Jescola bus clones. Maybe, maybe someone has seen it. You could abstract the sequence away entirely. So you just have one continuous pattern to work in, which um, I know not everybody likes that, but I find it a quite convenient um, style of working because I find that when you have to edit the sequence, it interrupts your your train of thought when you're composing. So um, yeah, I have some ideas that you could actually get rid of the sequence completely, and yeah, the compiler would figure out what's the optimal way uh, of you know dealing with things. And yeah, this the compiler can already do that kind of stuff. And okay, so. The part that gets me excited is this uh, console thing down here, all right? So this is this is where you can uh, hack on bin tracker. This is uh, well, you can do simple stuff like you know, uh, or you could interact um, with the tracker itself. 
like with the interface. Let me show that quickly. Mm. Hey, there we go. And of course, you can also under uh, talk to the to the compiler to the music data abstraction uh, uh, thing. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much where it's at. So, um, what's left to do? Um, okay, so for now, the priority is to kind of round up the GUI so that it's workable, which means implement the edit system uh, and undo, redo, that kind of stuff, and implement all the key handling. Um, then after that, uh, I'll have to build the bridge to MAME. So we can have our emulation. And I've tested that in principle. Like uh, the ideas I have about it seem to work, but I haven't standardized anything. Uh, so that needs to happen. And after that, I need to start uh, working on the plugin system. Like, uh, I've, again, I have some ideas, but I haven't written like any specification for it or anything. Um, and also the compiler. Um, well, as I was saying, it can already do everything, but often enough it will not be convenient, so there need to be more abstractions. So your config files will be simple and not a convolute of like config and half code and, you know, like the, the one uh, for Hubie that I just showed is uh, the config is about 30 lines, which is okay, I think. I would want to stay in that dimension for an average uh, sound drivers. So once all these uh, steps happen, uh, once these have happened, then I will release a very early beta, I think. And then you also start seeing a lot of different sound drivers from different platforms being, being added. Well, that's, that's the plan at least. At this point, Bin Trigger needs you. And that means, like right now, uh, okay, if you have any ideas, if you have any suggestions for this thing, if you have already any feature requests or just want to ask some questions, please fire away, uh, write, write me uh, at this address. Uh, also soon I will need, um, oh, soon I will, uh, I will need uh, people for testing and also people who would like to contribute code, but please hold out a bit, a bit longer. I would want to get the, the first early beta out and then oh, we'll see about that stuff. Uh, because right now too many things might still change, so it doesn't make that much sense. Um, also, I, need, I would need help. I could really use your help with some specific stuff, um, like uh, website and infrastructure would be a thing. Also stuff like, yeah, continue, uh, uh, continuous integration maybe. That would be helpful if somebody is uh, firm with that and would like to, to help me out a bit if, uh, with that. Um, also, uh, yeah, talking about continuous integration, I would really appreciate if someone could help me build on OS X because uh, I have almost no knowledge about that and it would be nice if somebody would be willing to help with that. And also in general, yeah, uh, just spread the word. I mean, I'm very excited about this project and I hope that other people are going to be excited about this project. Uh, so yeah. Let your friends know about it. Post it on social media, because personally, I hate social media, so I'm not going to post it a lot. Uh, but still, yeah, I want to do a Kickstarter for the thing once the, once the beta is out. So the Kickstarter will be for me to enable me to add all the cool and advanced uh, features. But yeah, that's going to happen 
probably, yeah, hopefully around spring next year. Uh, we'll see. I'll try my best. Um, for now, please follow the project, like uh, this QR thing that will bring you to the uh, newsletter sign up. There's going to be low volume newsletter maybe once in a month or once every month and a half. So, yeah, please follow that. And um, if you have any questions, now would be the time to ask. Ruf mal. I will bring a micro. One second. Of course, sure. <laughs> no. The point is. Okay. Please, say please, please base your GUI on Emacs and give us some emoji code VM for the plugins writing, and uh, maybe give us some popcorn and some buzzword uh, cards for the next talk. Great. Uh, well, okay. In response to that. It's all possible. We've been tracked the way it is built, but I am not going to build it for you. <laughs> Do it yourself. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, well then, thanks for checking it out. Thank you for presenting it. Give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs>